Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we're back underneath our 21 Dodge Cummins. Why? Well, if you've been following along, then you know this. We just dropped our video with the billet fast bracket. Now, what's the next component that you're going to complement that fast fuel system? Well, if you've got a fast system on your truck, then you've got probably a draw straw in the tank. How do you put that in? You're going to wrestle this tank down, you're going to get it out on the ground, you're going to drill a hole through it, you're going to put it back up in there. Then you're done, right? Well, at PVP, we go about it a different approach. We're high performance, so we go the high performance route. What is the product that we have for this? A baby Pac-Man sump. The job of this sump is very, very simple. You drill a hole in your tank, you put the sump in, and gravity pushes down on all the fuel, and guess what? You're making the most maximum amount of power from full to empty. You just gotta run out of fuel, then you ain't making make them no more power. That's all there is to it. Now guys, we've got all of our contents laid out. We've got our tools, we've got our hole saw, we've got our baby Pac-Man sump. We're gonna go over the individual tools for it, we're gonna show you what they do, and then we're gonna install it. Let's dive into it. First up, we've got our 3 8 ratchet. This is gonna go on both of your Allen head drives. First Allen head drive that you're gonna need is a 3 16th. This is gonna be for your eighth inch MPT. We'll show you that component soon. Next up, our 3 8 Allen head drive. You're gonna need this for the bolt that goes through the sump. 3 8 Allen head drive. And moving along, you've gotta drill a hole in your tank. You're gonna need a drill. We got a Dewalt here. You can pick it up at any hardware store. Finally, we've got our hole saw. This measures three inch. If you already have one, that's fine. Just make for sure it's three inch. If you go to purchase this, we'll have it where you can get it with a three inch hole saw or without. Now, let's dive into the components of the Baby Pac-Man saw. So the mail just ran. You've got your Baby Pac-Man on your table. Let's go over the contents. First up, we've got our Baby Pac-Man sump. We're gonna do this just like you are installing it here at the shop. You've got your Baby Pac-Man sump. You've got your O-ring that's gonna go inside of it. You have to have this. If not, it's gonna leak. Next up, we've got our Pac-Man top plate. This goes over the top of it. That way we can secure it. If you opted to buy the fittings from us for your sump, these are Dash 8s. Take a look. These are dash eights. These are what these are the fittings that you will need to connect to your fuel hoses. Next up, we got our eighth inch MPT. This goes into the drain. If you do not have this, she's gonna leak. We've got our steel rubber washer that's going over our half inch bolt. This secures the sump and the top plate together. We've got our stand pipe. Now, if you opted to buy the hole saw, the three inch hole saw, make for sure it's in your kit. We want to make for sure, just like if you're doing it here at the shop, when we start this, we want to finish it. You do not want to drill a hole in your tank, have fuel everywhere, and your truck's down. Now guys, if you went over all the contents, they're here, and you're ready, I'm ready, let's install it. So we just showed you guys what not to do. Don't grab your hole saw and go drilling holes. You're gonna mess up. And more importantly, these tanks are upward of $1,000. Hell, you might not even be able to get one of these tanks. So guys, we didn't drill ours at the back. We didn't drill it in the middle or the utmost middle. We're gonna drill it out the front. Before that, we wanna talk about one important subject. Will my truck run out of fuel at a quarter of a tank with our billet sump installed? No. Here's the deal. We totally understand we built this sump around a real world life scenario. You're driving down the road, it's late at night, and you can't get to the next gas station for 50 miles and you're below, you're like an eighth of a tank. If it has fuel in it, it's going to get to the sump, the fast is going to pick it up, shoot it up to the CP3 pump. Just keep in mind, these bills are extremely high if the fuel system goes out, so try to keep some fuel in it. We like a quarter of above. Now, let's locate the front of our tank and let's drill the correct hole placement. 
So we've got our hole saw placed here. You can get as technical as you want. We need to make for sure we've got equal flat distance here, 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 and back here. Everything looks good. Now keep in mind, you're fixing to drill a hole in your fuel tank. What is fixing come out of your tank? Diesel fuel. Remember me talking about a quarter of a tank? This would be a perfect time to have it at a quarter of a tank so you don't have buckets of diesel everywhere. Now let's drill that pilot hole, getting the fuel out of the tank. So this is your drill bit attached to your hole saw. This will protrude through the tank first and allow the fuel to come out. So this is the pilot hole. Find your center of your tank, press firmly but evenly, look at both sides, and now just simply start engaging the hole saw. So you're just slowly gonna go, because remember, you're gonna have fuel coming out. So I can feel it start eating through the tank right now. I'm gonna press a little firmly, not too hard because when it engages, when it engages, it's gonna grab really hard. So you've got your pilot hole drilled. At this point, diesel fuel is now coming out. Make for sure you have a five gallon bucket. I would have two if you're at a quarter of a tank to ensure you can get the fuel out of here. Now what you want to do is place your drill back in the hole. You've got your pilot hole here, center it up. Let me get mine centered up here. You don't have to go fast by any means. Apply light pressure, keep the RPMs up, light pressure, and let's drill a hole. Here we go. And sometimes I will throttle it, meaning I'll throttle it, but hold on to it tight. Throttle, throttle. And then I'm gonna let it eat. Now keep in mind, I'm not pushing very hard. I want it to make a clean, precise cut. If I force it through, it's not gonna look pretty. Here we go. And you drill a hole. And it needs to look nice and pretty. Come check this out. So our hole saw, we just finished up. Again, I was pressing lightly because we're turning metal into plastic. So if I keep the RPMs up, it'll make it nice and pretty and clean. If I just go through it, it's not gonna look very pretty. Now the proper way to do this, you want a razor blade and I want you to deburr all these edges. Everything around here, anything on the inside, I want this thing looking brand new. That way we get a perfect seal because we've got an O-ring that's gonna lay up here. I don't need any of this plastic allowing fuel to leak because if not, I'll be calling me and saying, hey, my fuel sump's leaking. Now, let's take a look at how to install the fuel sump. So we just drilled our hole. Next step is we wanna make for sure there's no contaminants. All we need is fresh, clean diesel in there. If you need to, grab a towel, wipe all this out, reach as far back as you can. We wanna make for sure you're not bringing out any plastic pieces. If there's no plastic pieces, you're ready for the next step. The next step is grab your top plate, grab your bolt. We wanna check the threads. We wanna make for sure this bolt goes in there nice and neat. Once we thread it down here a little bit, that's exactly what I want. Back the bolt out. Once we back this bolt out, we're gonna place the top plate. This goes one direction, one direction only. This C channel here needs to be facing us. Now, let's put it up in the tank. That simple, ready for the next step. Now let's grab our sump. We've got it. We need to place our O-ring inside the sump. Place it in here, no need to rush. Make for sure it fits in there very securely. We need to put our return stand pipe in the return port. Flip the sump over, you can see return, flip it back over. That's where this guy's gonna thread in to. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, turn it to the right, give it a good squeeze. Now it's ready to secure to our upper plate. You've gotta grab your half inch bolt and your washer. Put the washer on the bolt. This is where you're gonna find the hole in the upper plate. It's where the standpipe goes up through. Very important. So push it up through there, and you may have to juggle it back and forth. And once we're close, just give it a wiggle. Put your bolt at the bottom of the sump, 
and we are making contact. Now I'm gonna grab my wrench and we'll tighten her down. So now grab your 3 8 ratchet, grab your 3 8 Allen head socket, put them together. Let's get this sump secured. So put them at the bottom here. What I always do is press up on the sump and now I'm turning it to the right. You do not have to get it tight. This is where you want to orientate the sump. Now I know what's gonna happen here in just a second. Oh, we just ran into a problem. Let's show you what that problem is. So we've ran into a roadblock, right? Not really. So what's going on here is you've got your standpipe up in the sump and you've got a bridge up there that it's hitting. So when it rotates the sump around, it can't turn anymore. So what's a simple solution to this? You got two options. You can drop this unit out. You can shave the return pipe, but if you don't have anything to shave it, it's perfectly fine, guys. All you have to do is reach up here, turn the sump. Now you're ready to route your hoses that you haven't already routed. But first, let's go ahead and let's torque this sump down. So go ahead and torque her down. Make for sure after you do this full install, put some miles on it, you're going to want to retorque this because plastic will expand. We've got one more step before we're done installing this baby sump. So now we're going to pick up our eighth inch MPT socket head cap. We've got our Allen head 3 16 socket. And we're going to place it right here in the drain. This is where if you had contaminants in your system or if you just need to evacuate it, you're going to pull this, fuel is going to go everywhere. If you do not put it in, fuel is going to go everywhere. So simple as this, guys. Let's get it up here, get squared up with it, righty tighty. And we're going to go up, up, up. And when the threads start getting tight, you can hear it. You ain't got to try to break it off in there, but get it tight. So we just installed our baby Pac-Man sump. Now there's one thing that we did leave out, our fuel fittings. This is something that we didn't want to dwell on because a lot of you guys are professionals. You just need the sump, that way you can get your fast up and rolling. But there's going to be the guys out there that's a little bit timid of this install, and that's completely fine because we're here to tell you we've got a full kit, hoses, brackets, sump, all of it. We just need you to comment below and go, hey, I'd really like to see the full install and I may need some help with it. Absolutely, that's what we're here to do. So guys, we're gonna be back with our 21 Cummins on the dyno. We're gonna see what this little baby sump can do. We're gonna push it to its limits and kind of see where the low pressure fuel starts taking a dive. This is where I'd like for you guys to jump in the comments also. If you've bought one of our sumps, we wanna say thank you, but throw me a number up. I wanna see what kind of power these guys are doing. Make for sure, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you back here next week at Point Blank Performance.